Hi, it's WRTV's Ray Steele. I hope you like this video. In fact, I hope you will click that like button down there and click the subscribe button too so you don't miss the new stuff. Or you can click the subscribe button at the end of this video. Really appreciate it. With Lucas Oil Stadium, the Field House, Victory Field, a new soccer stadium now on the way, and many other venues hosting competitions year-round, it's hard to imagine today what was true 40 years ago. The sports scene here in Indy was truly Nap Town. Emphasis on the nap. That's when Indianapolis, under then-Mayor Bill Hudnut, made its first move toward his goal of becoming the amateur sports capital of the country. The city went after and landed the 1982 National Sports Festival. You got it! It was a competition sponsored by the U.S. Olympic Committee held in between Olympic Games. The goal, frankly, was to help the U.S. catch up to the Soviet Union in international sports. Ah, the 80s. Indy went on a sports building spree to host those games. The IU Natatorium, the track stadium that's now Carroll Stadium. And the race is off. The Major Taylor Velodrome, all still in heavy use these days. There were some who thought all that building toward an industry that didn't really exist in the city at that time was a waste. Julia Carson was a state senator at that time, and she said, It's like going out buying a Mercedes Benz and you don't have the money to buy Pampers for a newborn child. It's just a gross misplacement of priorities. But the sports pushers won out, and boy did the people turn out to watch. A quarter of a million spectators in all. Not just the marquee sports like track, figure skating, and swimming and diving, but my personal favorite, and apparently Derek Thomas's favorite too. This is team handball, a bruising, fast-paced sport. This is Dorothy Franco, a team handball player. She's off today, and her prescription for free time well spent is simple, sun and fun. I so, haven't been bored for a minute. You know, it's been great. So as far as you're concerned, they could have it here every year then? That's fine by me. <laughs> Maybe Dorothy Franco is why Derek was a fan of team handball. Another thing hard to imagine today, the National Sports Festival brought some of the greatest athletes this country has ever produced to Indianapolis. Carl Lewis, dominant in the sprints and the long jump. He came oh so close to a world record 30-foot long jump at the games, only he barely committed a foul. Evelyn Ashford, the fastest woman in the world at that time. Brian Boitano, what would Brian Boitano do before he was an Olympic champion? and the greatest diver in history, Greg Louganis. WRTV digital editor Michael Hartz recently caught up with Greg as he became quite familiar with Indy back in the 1980s. For me, it was always kind of a safe place, you know, to go. Um, and, you know, whether it be nationals or Olympic trials or Pan American Games, um, making my professional dance debut there, you know, they, it, it, this uh, the Sullivan Award <laughs> I got there. I mean, there's so many fond, fond memories you know, of Indianapolis. Jack Berger also has some fond memories and some sweet threads from the National Sports Festival. He was their promotions director. I haven't thrown these things out in 40 years. <laughs> They've moved several times. After the festival, the sports floodgates opened for Indianapolis. Just two years later, we stole <clears throat> acquired the Colts from Baltimore. In 1987, the amateur athletes of the entire world came to town for the Pan American Games. Too many men's and women's college basketball tournament games to count. And eventually in 2012, the big daddy of U.S. sports, the Super Bowl. All because some Hoosier visionaries, against the odds, lit an amateur athletics flame 40 years ago. With Throwback Thursday, Ray Steele. Sports capital of the country. WRTV.